What's up everybody, it's Lexi D here. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Thanks for rocking with me. Thanks for staying with me through all of the changes that have happened over the last nine years that I've been on YouTube. If you have been watching me consistently, then you'll notice that there's been kind of a change in the content that I post. Lately, I've been po posting a lot of travel vlogs, and that's because I've been putting a lot of my time and attention towards my project management YouTube channel. So if you're interested in project management videos, in agile delivery videos, or you're even curious in terms of what any of that means, then I'm gonna have a link below to my project management YouTube channel where I've been posting regularly and consistently on those topics. But in this video, I wanted to get into a life update. I wanted to share with you all, I want to share with you all what has been happening with me over the year and some change that I've kind of been inactive in terms of actually sitting down and recording a video. And in the words of Kourtney Kardashian, I've just been living life, you know, just living life. We're just out here living life. And, you know, as much as we can live life in a whole panoramic, you know? So with all of that in mind, I'm going to have chapters for you all so you can feel free to skip around in this video to the various topics that interest you. So let's first start off with relationships. I feel like relationships are always the juicy topic. You know, relationships and weight loss, I think are two things that are just, you know, they pull anybody in because they tend to be things that are a challenge for some people, maybe even a lot of people. And so I will be talking about two, both of those subjects. But let's first start with relationships. So in terms of for me, I was actually in a relationship for a brief period of time. It was with a guy who I have known for 10 some odd years. And it was a it was a roller coaster relationship. It was something where we started off as friends and we did not think about, hey, before jumping straight into a relationship, we need to have a transition period where we are actively dating. And I know I'm kind of giving you all the Cliff Notes version of this. Um, I just wanted, <laughs> I kind of just wanted to jump right into things, but yeah, I'll just kind of give some more details here. And so, like I said, I've known, I knew this guy for quite some time and we did date pretty early on in college. Things didn't work out. And so we stayed friends for a long time and every now and then he would try to shoot his shot. I don't know if they're saying that these days, but he would try to date me again and I just wasn't really in that place. And so there had been some shifts in my mind where I started to look at him differently and I really just appreciated how he was treating me as a friend. And I felt like, you know what, why not try this out? Like worst case, we can still be friends. That was a very naive thing to do. But I did learn a lot through that situation and I just learned about, whew, I learned more, even more what I need in a relationship to be able to thrive and to be able to show up as the best version of myself. And unfortunately, that relationship didn't work out. We talked about marriage, we talked about kids with each other and you know, I met his parents he re-met my parents because he had met my parents way like when we dated the first time. And so it was definitely something that was really heartbreaking. And ultimately I did, our friendship did dissolve in the end. I was reminded when things ended, why for so long I decided not to date him. And that was because he tends to be conflict avoidant. I'm not going to put all his business out there, but you know, when someone's response to when someone's response to conflict is to shut down and to go as far as to block you, there, there's just, at that point, there's nothing you can do, right? There's, there's nothing I could do to bring that relationship forward, no matter what I was willing to do, say, whatever else, sacrifice. And so it was something that was short lived, but it was something that I got a lot of juice from. I got a lot of affirmation around who I was now showing up in that relationship because prior to that prior to that relationship I had been dealing with a situationship for two years which brought about a lot of trauma and a lot of just dysfunction that I then worked through in therapy it really helped me to it, it was a situation that highlighted my anxious attachment style and so having the opportunity to go to therapy to make it a 
to make it a priority to consistently pray to God and to have a relationship to God, I did a lot of healing before I got into this relationship. And so I do feel like I showed up as a better version of myself. And if for, no if for nothing else, I am happy that at least I got to experience, hey, here's another situation after you've done all this healing. Subsequent to that, I've dated another guy since then, not exclusively, just kind of hanging out a little bit. And this has been another situation where I have learned, I have got, I've, I've had an opportunity, I've had a chance to really try out the, I've had a chance to kind of be tested. You know, it's one thing to be out of a relationship and to say you've done all this work and all this healing. It's another thing to be put to the test. And so even in this situation with this guy, I've been put to the test in terms of asking questions that I wouldn't usually ask. So being very upfront about, in an assertive way, not an aggressive way, about where I see myself in the next few years. What are the things I want in a relationship? And asking him and just being more curious about getting to know him versus, I feel like even 10 years ago, I'm 32 now. So 10 years ago, I was very much in this mindset of how can I get this guy to choose me versus how can I just see if this person's even a right fit for me? And so now since doing all of this work and and tending to my needs, I have been able to show up in ways that I haven't before. And it has resulted in much better dating experiences for me. So I would say in date when it comes to dating and relationships, I'm definitely making a lot of progress. Okay, so now let's talk about body image. So in addition to relationships and just my dynamic in relationships, being one of the things that has for a long time in my life been something that I have felt like is out of my control and has brought me a lot of stress. There's also been my body image and being able to maintain my weight at and being able to maintain my weight. It's been something that has been a challenge for me in spite of working out consistently, eating, you know, having good eating habits. And most recently, I've been working with a dietitian, and what she helped me to discover through testing is that I have estrogen dominance. And so I'm not even going to try to get into the technical or scientific way of describing it, but from what I understand with me having estrogen dominance and the way that my body rids, metabolizes, there we go, metabolizes estrogen, there is, it's not, my body is not metabolizing the estrogen enough. And so that's causing, that could be one of the reasons why my body is holding on to this excess weight. So that's just one small part of this is like in terms of weight loss and me doing my homework to try to figure it out. I have felt like throughout these years, what I have been doing to get to a place where I am at peace with my body, I have been tackling it from all different angles. I have looked, <laughs> I have looked at, uh, I've read books about intuitive eating, taken a course about intuitive eating. I have gone to nutritionists. I've tried a paleo diet. I think at one point I tried keto. So there's so many different things that I've tried and what I have learned through coming to a better place with my relationship with my body image is that it is a culmination of habits, of thoughts, of ideas that I have had to arrive at to be able to make more peace with it. And so it is not one thing. There's not one magic pill or one habit that you have to do. There's so many things. And I actually might make a video on the various habits and things that I've done to be able to get to a better place. What I'm doing next, or what I'm doing next to address the estrogen dominance is I'm taking a su supplement called DIM, DIM Detox. I just started it a few days ago, so I can't speak to its effects and how it's if it's been helpful to me. But it's something that I'm excited about. I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel for being able to get to a weight that I want to be at and that I know will be. Um, and, I, and then I just know that I will feel good about how I look. I, overall, I'm a healthy person, which ties into the next topic of an update on my thyroid. So in July of 2013, I was diagnosed with Graves' disease, also known as hyperthyroidism, or I think 
Graves' disease causes hyperthyroidism. Don't quote me on that. And so it's now been going on nine years of dealing with this. And I haven't had symptoms for at least about eight years. Like I, I my body was able to resolve itself of the symptoms of hyperthyroidism, which for me was heart palpitations and increased um, and elevated at rest heart rate being unable to sleep like those things were resolved pretty quickly into starting medication and starting treatment um into starting treatment and so for me it's been a matter of i have a goiter so that means i have an enlarged thyroid and my my doctor has been ordering mris to measure the size of it every few months and so the last two to three scans that I had showed that my thyroid has grown, but then this last one has shown that it has shrunk. And so right now we're just kind of in this process of monitoring my thyroid. He said that my level, my levels are all good to go, which is super exciting because depending on what doctor I talk to, they'll look at my information and say, no, you need to get that thyroid removed. And there's so much that comes with getting your thyroid removed. It's not just you get it removed and you go back to normal life. There's a likelihood of switching from being from having hyperthyroidism to having hypothyroidism. So instead of having an overactive thyroid, because I have no thyroid, I'd have you know an underactive one because there wouldn't be one, right? And then it would ha I'd have to go through this process of taking medication and getting to a place where I'm ultimately my levels are where they should be. And there's just so many things that can happen negatively when you have a thyroidectomy, meaning have the thyroid removed. So I'm, I'm at a place where I'm comfortable with monitoring it and seeing how things go. And I'm hopeful that things can get better. I'm going to try some alternative medicine as well to see if that can help. And so that's really where I'm at with my thyroid and with my body image at this point. All right, so I have two more topics to cover with you all. The next one is my hair. So I have been loving Passion Twist. I don't know how long I have been wearing Passion, Tri Passion, Tri Passion Twist now, but at least for two years. This has become like my go-to style. My hair underneath though has been thriving. Like it's so long, I'm going to insert some pictures. If I have any video clips, I'll insert that as well. But my hair has just been doing absolutely wonderful. When I started on this, when I started posting videos, I was, I think I wanna say I had relaxed hair at the time, but it was very short lived because then I started transitioning to natural and I have been natural since either 2013 or 2014. It's so funny, it's like everything started happening. It's 2013 for me my youtube channel really getting consistent on that my hair being dyed my hair and you know learn and going through the transition of going from relaxed to natural being diagnosed with graves disease so there was so much that happened in 20 2013 for me it was oh it was a rough um it was a lot that happened that year and it was also the first year out of college and so it that whole transition was absolutely wild for me i was not prepared for that at all but um so with that going back to my hair so i have been natural like i said at least since 2014 and i have just i've been through so many joys with my hair i've dyed my hair i've cut my hair and had a tapered cut now i'm in a state of i just want to see how long it can get and my best bet at not cutting it off again because i loved my taper cut tapered cut is to keep it tucked away that is my best bet at this point because i get tempted and the thing with having a tapered cut or any cut for that matter or just your hair is the maintenance and so this is so much easier to maintain than for me, the way I like my hair to look and how fresh I wanted my taper cut to look in my lineup. I was in that barber chair every 10 days and it just, it was too much for me. It was too much. It was too much. So I, that's why that was the driving factor of why I made the decision to grow my hair out. And also it was harder to have kind of like really chill days with my really chill kind of laid back 
what's the, the way I'm looking to describe this? You couldn't have a bad hair day when you have short hair. There's no concept of throwing your hair up into a bun if things don't work. You gotta make it work. And that was something that for me at times was a challenge. And I just said, you know what? I need to be able to have more flexibility. And so hence another reason why I decided to grow my hair out. And so my hair is thriving. Um, in terms of my hair, my hair routine, even when my hair is out, I'm so low maintenance. I remember when I used to do pre-poos and deep conditions. I don't do like none of that. Um, yeah, I don't really do any of that. I just, <laughs> I shampoo my hair. I will condition my hair. I'll do maybe a three minute condition, but like sitting under a dryer and all of that, those days are gone. Those days are gone. <laughs> and I'm not saying that I won't ever do that again. It's just I've become lazy. But my hair has been fine. Every time I go and get my trims, you know, my the stylist that I go to tells me that my hair is healthy. So I'm like, whatever I'm doing, I'm going to keep on, keep on keeping on. <laughs> All right. So final topic is going to be around my career, my job. So I mean, so in terms of my career, I actually received a job promotion in August of last year. So August of 2021. I did not see it coming. I was not actively trying to work for a job promotion. If you've watched one of my previous videos that I have since, I go back and forth if I wanna leave the video up or take it down, it's private as of, as of recording this video. But in that video, I shared that I was let go from my former job and you know there was a lot that happened with that. And so for me having been promoted at a job where, how, how do I wanna say this? So I had been at my former job for a year and a half and then at my current job, I had, in the same amount of time that I was at my former job, in my current job, I was then promoted. I hope that makes sense. But ultimately to say, there was such a juxtaposition between my former job and my current job and just how I was perceived and also how I showed up. Like I'm in such a good place right now where I feel successful, where I get such good feedback, and I feel like I'm in a really good place and I feel aligned. There's opportunities for me to grow. The whole agile coaching capacity of my work statement is something that is new for me and something that came as a result of that promotion. And so it's just been so exciting for me to be in a space where I feel supported, where you know I like my team members that I'm working with and where I can see I can see the growth and I can see the path for growth as well. When I was in my previous environment at my previous company, there was so much toxicity in that environment that I really was just trying to survive the day to day. So to go from that type of environment to this one where I feel like I'm just thriving, it is, I can't tell you how much peace of mind it brings to me. Work takes up a lot of our time and our day. And so if you are miserable at work, if you are feel fearful of losing your job or messing up and that causing you to lose your job, you're not really living. You know, it, it caused a situation for me where I was preoccupied with work and everything was about work. And so to be in the state of mind that I am now, I feel so blessed and so fortunate, especially too with this whole panoramic going on. You know, I, I regularly go through LinkedIn news and one of the articles that I saw are just kind of one of the one of the things that came up in the news feed was that people who are not face to face with their employer are less likely to be promoted. And so for me, someone who had only had a month face to face time with my boss before everything shut down and then spending a majority of my time at this company not face to face and to be able to be promoted, I just was like, like, I was like, oh my God, I just, I was at a loss for words and I still, it still leaves me at a loss for words because I understand that that's not everyone's reality and I just feel so grateful for that. So with all that being said, I wanna thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give this video a thumbs up and also feel free to subscribe so you can be notified when I post new videos. One of my big, probably like heavy hitter videos that's to come is going to be a 10 year post college, 10 year life after college video. If you have been with me for some time, then you know I've been posting life after college videos at least since 
2014 and so it's about to be the big 10 years out of college and there's so much that has happened since graduating so definitely make sure to subscribe so you can be notified when that when i post that video i do intend to continue to post travel vlogs you know some dating advice here or there and just you know constantly allowing this channel to follow me through where i'm at in my life and and if you look back on my videos you'll see that i feel like youtube for me has become a sort of video diary and so it's a way for me to document the things that i'm learning along the way and which can be a double-edged sword because sometimes i may make stances or i may take stances and make statements that i then feel like you know years later i unlearn these things and you know it's there can be so much that can go into posting videos on youtube into being open about where I'm at right now in my life or where I'm at in a particular particular place. But ultimately, I feel like it's been a way for me to grow and for others to learn from my growth and to grow as well. So again, with all that being said, I want to thank you all for watching this video and I will talk to you all in my next one.